everything with Prophet Rosalind Atkinson and Pastor Gail Matthews. Take it away, Prophet. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very, very much. I certainly appreciate it. Welcome everyone to today's edition of God and Everything, where you know what we talk about is God and Everything. We are so very, very grateful that you are here with us today. We certainly appreciate it. I'm going to ask that you tag somebody. I'm going to ask that you invite somebody. I'm going to ask that you tell somebody to come on to God and everything. And y'all know I do it every week. I don't do it by myself. I do it with my bride and live. I do it with the girl that got the fly hairdo today. That's working. <laughs> in, and that is Pastor Gail Matthews. Hey, girl. Hey, how you doing? Hey, girl. Hey. You know, this is this is that like that old song. This the stand by. Stand by me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are working it. You look cute, girl. You look cute. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, before we get in our topic today, um, I want you guys to see uh, right here on the screen, and which will be up at the end of the um, broadcast as well, is uh, my Prophetic Insight School, which will begin um, Wednesday, March 4th. I had to change the date because of some publishing delays, but we should be up and running. Um, I should absolutely know for sure on the 10th of February that my book and everything is just like I wanted it to be, right? So that um, you guys can begin to register. The registration cost is $100, which will include the book. The book is where what I will be teaching from. So you need the book. Even if you do not um, come to the class, those of you that are prophetic in nature, those of you that um, all your life you've been sensing, you've been feeling, you've been seeing, you've been dreaming, all of those things, you need to purchase the book because it is basic, fundamental, prophetic. People want to go on over to something else and they do not have the basic foundations yes. of the prophetic ministry and, and what a prophet is and what the gift of the spirit of uh, prophecy is, what that entails and all of that. We want to see through doors and to see over mountains and see names and, 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 and phone numbers, you know, uh, dangling in space and all of that. But we don't know the very fundamentals, the very basics. We want to build a prophetic ministry without having a foundation. And if you don't have the right foundation, you will sink. It will eventually crumble. And so I am that prophet. I am that prophet that believe without a shadow of a doubt that the only true word of prophecy is the 66 books of the Bible. That's Amen. it. It is the sure word that is going to come to pass. We are, we are not thinking, wondering, perhaps, maybe. God says my word is forever, uh, uh, forever settled in heaven. It is established, yes. period, dot, is yes. going to happen. And so when you have a foundation of the word of God, God can begin to use you and utilize you into speaking prophetically. When you understand that the Bible says that the gift of prophecy which is one of the nine gifts of the spirit. It is a gift of the spirit. That's how yes. you get your information. You get your information from the spirit of God, no other entities. And so we see people doing all kinds of stuff, but that we can't biblically show it in the scriptures in terms of what God is saying in terms of the logos. You know, people can cut, copy and paste. They do it every day. We see it all day long. But we're not talking about copy and paste. We're talking about line upon line, yes. precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So I teach you the fundamentals of the prophetic, um, the gifts of the spirit, um, the um, motivational gifts, which are two entirely different gifts, the fivefold ministry gifts, you know, uh, my first chapter, which um, when I taught this some years ago, I taught it um, every year after the Lord had given it to me. And the title is, so you, so you want to be a prophet or so you think you want to be a prophet. And when I'm done teaching and in the book, you know, um, showing biblically what that means. If you have not been called to this, you will leave this. I had mm. um, 37 people in my first class when I 
God first revealed this to me. And then the, the, we met every second and fourth Saturday. Then at the library, we had 37 people that first Saturday. And then the fourth Saturday of that month, we had 22. Because listen, if you not if you not called to this, you wow. you, you you know to desire to prophesy, Paul said to covet it, meaning covet the the gift of prophecy so you can encourage and strengthen and build um, and encourage people. But that prophetic office, I don't care how bad you covet it. It is a gift of Jesus Christ. Oh, and if he has not called you to it, then you need to leave it be. Be a person Amen. that God uses in the prophetic. Be a person that God uses to encourage and strengthen and build the body. But don't run, for, run after something that you have not been called to. Because here is the thing. Here come the attack of the enemy. And I say this to people all the time. You are not equipped for the warfare that that gift oh entails God, oh because you, it's a grace gift. And with the grace gift come the grace for the warfare. And so if you have not been called to that gift, you do not have the grace for the warfare. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about that. We talk about, like I said, the fundamentals of uh, prophets and, you know, intercessory prayer and what all that means and, you know, being a prophet of the word and all of that. So I just want to encourage you, you know, if you have never been through one of my prophetic insight school trainings, this is for you. If you've been praying and you've been asking God and you've been telling God, you know, I want to know the truth. I want to know how this thing is really supposed to work. I've been seeing how folks say it work and I've been leery because it's been basic a uh, 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 prophecy that people have been given out that your granddaughter or your, your six-year-old could tell somebody and not the heart of God, um, then these eight weeks have been designed for you. Um, and we're going to do it uh, via Zoom. And um, registration is going on now. You can register at uh, propheticvoiceministries.org um, is a link right there, or you can register through uh, my cash app, cash app, dollar sign, Prophetess Rise. Um, if you just want to purchase the book and you say, I just want to read it, I don't know if I want her to be my teacher. <laughs> I understand. Because okay. her don't play <laughs> when it comes to prophetic ministry, okay? And so um, I get it, but you want to just read the book and see if you want to come to the class the next time. The books um, are $18.00. I believe $21 with the, um, or $20, I can't remember. I think it's $17 and $20 total with um, the postage. So you can go right to my website and pre-order your book. And as soon as they arrive, I will contact you and tell you that the book is on the way. And if you know of somebody, if you are around somebody, if it's your child, your daughter, your spouse, somebody in your church, pastors, I am not trying to build a church for myself. I'm trying mm -hmm. to help the prophetic people in your ministry come back and help you guide and govern your church, not take over, not replace you, but come in line with you and submit to you. That's, that's who I am and that's what I teach. And so send your prophetic people, send them, pay for it. So into one of your prophets or two of your prophets or eight of your prophets' lives so that they can come and get this teaching that is available. And then purchase the book yourself so you can know that what I'm teaching is sound and is biblically based and is line upon line. It's not something out of my imagination. It's not right. something that I have created. There's no cut and paste here, but it is the Bible. And um, just like the Bible teaches it okay nothing added and nothing taken away okay so um register 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 it will begin uh wednesday the 4th of march 2021 at 7 30 p.m and we will go for eight consecutive weeks every wednesday at 7 30 p.m okay god bless you if you got any questions or any you know want more information please don't hesitate to inbox me and I will get all the information that I can to you, okay? All right, that's that. And we'll talk about it again at the end of today's show. Well, 
we put a post up today about um, the church, you know, and the actually, you know, the churches, the seven churches that are um, in the book of Revelations. And, you know, Pastor Gil, we find ourselves there, right? But we also find ourselves in that book of Jude, that one chapter of Jude is with the church. Yeah. Fine. And yeah. Jude said, I need y'all to contend for the faith yeah. that was once given to the saints. Yeah. We're not, because we have allowed anything and everything to come in and to dilute what was once delivered to the saints. Sound yeah. doctrine, Amen. you know, uh, uh, the word of God, teaching yes. about holiness and right living and right relationship with God and living a lifestyle that you are not relaxed in sin. You heard me relaxed in sin and just okay to just live in sin and then come and play the drums and live in sin and come and preach the word and come and pray, come and prophesy just when you to get up out the bed with somebody. That the faith that was once delivered to the saints was a pure faith. It was pure. It was holy. It was yes. real. It was authentic. It wasn't mixed with uh, a vain ambition. It wasn't mixed with trying to get a platform and trying to get a gig and trying to get some likes on social media or trying to get somebody to see some money in the cash app. Help me today, God. It was not that. It was pure and it was holy and it was mm -hmm. peaceful and it was intriguing and that's what Jude said he said contend that what does that mean to be yeah. a contender is a fighter you got to yes. fight you got to fight for it because yeah. when you look at what these people is delivering out here baby you got to fight for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Yeah. And you know, it is amazing to me, Pastor Gail, that we are in this hour, in this time, in the body of Christ and in the world. It's just like, this is like for real. You know, like I be, yes. I be like, is this for real? Right. Like, like I'm I'm serious. I know we live in, in you know, real time, <laughs> but sometimes right. I'll be looking at stuff and I'll be like, we being pumped. <laughs> right, right. It's the twilight. Somebody's gonna come out with the camera and say, I've just been punking y'all all the time. Right. Because this mm -hmm. couldn't be real. And you couldn't have all of these people following the okie doke. And then when you begin to teach and to share and to preach and to prophesy the authentic word of God, then you look like you're out of sorts. And yes. you look like you're out of season. And so what happens, Pastor Gail, is that people, they cannot deal with that. They can't deal with yeah. the rejection of that. They can't yeah. deal with the backlash of that. People right. talking about them, you know, uh, uh, people excluding them. You know, they don't want them. They, they're not inviting them. Not, so they can't deal with it. So they conform to that sad existence mm -hmm. as opposed to sticking out like a thumb. I say it all the time. You heard me say it on this platform and I say it all the time. Jesus said, I ain't come to send peace. <laughs> Y'all keep looking for peace and tranquility. I ain't come to send peace. I came to send a sword. There will be a divide. Yes. And unfortunately there yes. will be a divide in my house. You know why it's a divide in the house? Because the weed and the tear, they're growing up together. Yeah. That was a divide right there. The weed and the tear, they growing yeah. up together. Now, we don't necessarily know who is we. People we call them weed is really tears. People that we call them tears is really we. We don't know. That's why the angels will do the divide. Okay? Exactly. But we still growing up. It's a division there. It yes. is people that name the name of Christ that depart from iniquity. And it is people that prophesy in his name, that do miracles in his name, that lay hands in his name, that don't depart from iniquity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He right. calls them workers of iniquity. But they doing all of those wonderful things in his name, but yet he calls them a, a worker, a worker of, iniquity. of iniquity. And so people get all, you know, um, happy about, you know, a prophetic word, like, woo, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> When that very person could be a worker of iniquity. 
That's exactly. Because that's not what you're supposed to be jumping up and down for. Exactly. So I'm not in the woo-woo because people know something about me personally that don't know me or know something about somebody else that they don't, I don't get in the woo-woo with that because I serve a supernatural God. I am not in awe of, of that. Signs, miracles, or wonders, wonders is supposed to be a mark of the body. It's supposed to be what we walk in on a regular. I yeah. just told somebody the other day, I said, I got too many supernatural experiences to let somebody be tripping on me. I, just, I don't want you to come. I ain't going to give you no money. I ain't going to let you speak. I got too many. I told my husband right. the day, I said, listen, I said, I had a, a prayer breakfast before social media came about, Gail. And I remember uh, Melanie Smith, she mm -hmm. called me. Happy birthday, Mel. The day it's her birthday. Shout out to her. Yeah. She called me and she had five people to add to the list. I'll never forget it. It was 12 people on the team. And then five people, now it's 12 people on the team. So let's tell you how many people we arrested. So 12 folks was team members. <laughs> she gave me five people that had registered. We had 26 people total. 26 people in all. And 12 of them was the team. Right? But God told me to have a prayer breakfast. God. Pastor Gail, it wasn't no social media there. It wasn't no Facebook. Wasn't no, it wasn't even my space. We had none of that. When I looked up, there were people that were getting out of dams. My mouth had dropped so the one of the girls on the team, Tina, she looked at me. She said, Roz, because you know they can call me Roz. Hello. And she said to me, she said, Roz, she said, close your mouth. I had no idea that my mouth was hanging that, that wide open. And when she said it, I, I realized that I was, and I closed it and we laughed, right? It was so many people. We ended up having 87 people. My God, I think I was there. <laughs> and we had yeah. so many people that yep. the team couldn't sit down. Absolutely. I had to pray. We was praying the 12 loaves and, 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 right. and, and right. five fish prayer yeah. and they had to literally we use every table in our church we put a tablecloth on the communion table so people can eat and God just do you think I'm going to sit up here and let you dictate to me what I can say and what I can preach based on you opening the door for me when God said 66 people 60 plus people that I had no idea was coming, didn't know them folk, or none mm -hmm. of that. You think I'm gonna let you determine what mm -hmm. I say or do? Mm -hmm. and, that, and let me tell you something, it's a price to pay for that. Absolutely. It is absolutely a price to pay for. It absolutely is. That don't come by osmosis. It is a price to pay to be an authentic right. voice of God. Because you ain't allowed political affiliations to deter you or stop you, or prevent you, or taint your word from speaking truth. You're not going to allow friendship, platforms, people with power, people with none, to mm -hmm. taint the word of God that's coming out of your mouth. Absolutely. It is absolutely a price to pay for that. Absolutely. It sometimes it's a lonely place. Yes. Sometimes it is. That's just that's just the truth of the yes. matter. But baby, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Because I promise you, I'm going to hear God say to me, Thank you, well done, thou good yes. and faithful yes. servant. And yes. I don't care about nothing and nobody else. And all don't like that. Too bad. I ain't the one sent to you. But this is some people that I have been sent to that welcomes the blessing and the rebuke, because both of them come from the hand of God. They come from his mouth. He is a God of mercy, and he is a God of judgment. You got to take all of that. You just can't just, you know, welcome all of all the mercy. Yeah, hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a, he's a loving God. And then when God is trying to correct you, then you want to fall out on the floor, and you want right. to leave, and you want to say them people ain't God. No, baby. It is, okay, I'm going to bless you, but it's also... He also told them people over there at Revelation, you're going to lose your candlestick. Yes. Okay, dear. I'm going to let you take it from there. Go, girl. Go. <laughs>
Well, I think we need to read the text, you know, so they won't think it's just us. How about that, Roz? And then we'll take okay. it from there. Go ahead. And then All I'm right. Gonna, Revelations, the second chapter. The first church that they deal with is the church in Ephesus. And I'm reading from the Amplified. That's my bread of choice. But you know, uh, you can read from whichever version you like. To the angel, divine messenger of the church in Ephesus, write, these are the words of the one who holds firmly the seven stars, which are the angels or messengers of the seven churches in his right hand. The one who walked among the seven golden lampstands, the seven churches. I know your deeds and your toil and your patient endurance and that you cannot tolerate those who are evil and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles, special messengers, personally chosen representatives of Christ, and in fact are not, and have found them to be liars and imposters. And I know that you who believe are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my namesake and that you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. But I have this charge against you, that you have left your first love. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. So remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior. Seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lampstand the church, its impact, my God, from its place, unless you repent. Yet you have this to your credit, that you, are, you hate the works and corrupt teachings of the Nicolaitans that mislead and delude people, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the son of God, I will grant the privilege to eat the fruit from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Ooh, and I want to say like the old saints, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. <laughs> Listen, it is, I, I just want to talk about what the revelation that John got. You know, um, this is not something that he was uh, dreaming and he, he was not expecting. It wasn't something he conjured up. God orchestrated the events of his life, that he was called away into Patmos. He was isolated for the preaching of the gospel. And it's something about how that when persecution comes, as Prophet Rise was talking about her own ministry, a lot of times when people are persecuted for being, um, uh, you know, purveyors and promoters of the word of God and for their uh, giving the word of God, it only takes them to another dimension a higher level. And that's exactly what has happened with John. And he begins to give the message from the one, the Bible says, who holds not only the messengers of these churches, but holds the establishment of these churches. And what is a key word that kept coming out to me, uh, to everyone, I know, he said, I know your deeds. Who can stand against the knowledge of God? Who can stand and refute or, or come against the prosecution of God? Who can stand in our defense? Because he says, I know your deeds. And he went on, what I love about him, as we take pattern from even in our own lives as parents and as uh, supervisors and anything, he begins to talk about their good before he talks about their bad. He says, I know you're working. And in, in my growing up and experience, in the church, you know, we just ascribe so much to works. Everything, you fried chicken, you you ushered, you know, you was on the nurses, you was on the choir and everything. All of these things was work. But uh, it's more than that. He said, I see your toil. And the, the toil really is the working out the gospel. He said, I see your patient endurance. You know, we go through some things in life. We go through some persecutions. We go through some hardships. We go through some times, in, even in ministry, in the development of ministry and the opening of doors of ministry and the uh, uh, maturity of ministry. He says, I love that. He says, I know that about you. 
I know you hate evil. He says, I know you tried them, as the Bible says, try them, try the spirits to see whether they are God. I know they can't come in and tell you, you I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I, I, I've been chosen by God, because you are going to put them to the test. The Old Testament test for every prophet, for everybody that spoke in the name of the Lord is prophet lie, prophet die. So they began to look at the finished work that accompanied the words that were coming from uh, these prophets and these promoters and these preachers. But here's the thing. He says, I see that in you. I see that you try people. I see that you do not um, uh, go after those who are just saying they come in my name. Because as Prophet Ross just brought out in Matthew, it says, many going to say, you know, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We did this in your name. He said, yeah, you worked, but you worked in iniquity. You worked, and here's the, the, the mystery of iniquity. Here's iniquity. Instead of trying to defeat the carnality, the sensuality, and the, hum, the uh, uh, selfishness that is in us, these people have actually lived to fulfill that. And sometimes people don't do that overtly. They do it subtly. They do it making you think, you know, people can come to you with all kind of uh, false humility and all of that. But in all of this, he says, I know that you have looked at these people's character and you've been able to look at them and say, uh-uh, they are not on point. He said, I know that you have uh, endured things. You have uh, believed, you have held on. He said, all of that for my name's sake. He said, and you kept held on to the truth. But in doing that, see, we can do all of that. We can go to church. We can maintain our ministries. We can uh, very uh, routinely maintain a prayer life. We can very routinely feed the hungry. We can do all of that, but we can do it. And this is what was happening in, in the Ephesian church was the absence of doing it out of a profound love and devotion for God. We can praise God without our hallelujahs and our thank you, Jesus, and our glory to God having a deep root of love. You can say, I love you to anybody, and it just be three things that came out of your mouth. And so he says, he laid the groundwork. So here he qualified his knowledge of them first. <laughs> He said, I know how good you have worked. I know how you toil. I know how patient you've been. I know how you don't let all these false prophets and voices come up. He said, I know this. He said, but it's something else I know. I know your love for me ain't like it used to be. Oh my God. Anybody that's in a relationship, especially in a marital relationship, there's times when things just kind of wane. They just don't have the same fervor. And one partner can uh, uh, pick it up maybe sometimes over the other one. The one who has really received uh, that deluge of love and all of that, they may begin to feel like they're not getting that same kind of love that they used to get. And that's the way God was with the Ephesian church. He said, I don't feel it like I used to feel it. You're not giving it to me. Yeah, you're doing the same thing, just like a wife. We can cook dinner. We can wash the clothes. We can take care of the children. We can do the bills. But he, they know that we're doing it out of an obligation. We're doing it out of a pattern or routine instead of doing it out of love. He said, and he said, so I want you to remember this. See, you used to be way up there on your love scale. He said, I want you to look at where you done fell down. You're falling, you're dropping down. He said, and it's time for you to repent. Now, one thing I want to talk about, Roz, and then you talk about this new church. The Nicolaitans back there, you, you was all in it in that Jew text. Because what has happened with them? He says, I know you hate them. He said, but still his love was messed up. You hate the teachings of them. Their teaching was much like the teachings of Balaam. Mm -hmm. Balaam would not curse Israel in order for Israel to lose the war. But what Balaam did tell the king, and I believe his name was Balak, he said, if you send in women, foreign women, women mm -hmm. that are idol worshipers, mm -hmm. and let them seduce the men and let them sleep, they will infiltrate the camp 
because of that fornication, they will break down the whole dedication of God. And so what's happening? I read something today someone posted. I think you probably read it too on this story and said, our brothers are not operating in the same level of abstinence in the churches and it's causing a breakdown. You know, uh, uh, not just the brothers, but people, it's people in the church that think fornication is like stealing a Twizzler. <laughs> you know, it's like the Bible say all other sins is without the body. That's but they, they, they take, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and say your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So the Nicolaitans was, was uh, backing this up and letting folks have greasy grace because they were saying, after you got saved, after you get saved, you know, you don't have to worry about works no more. We got mm -hmm. some people saying that now. He said, yes. you know what you want to do because the blood of Jesus covered it. Lies and garbage. You got to live up to it. If that's the case, you can say, I went to the altar and got married to Joe Blow and said, I already got married to Joe Blow back in 19, whatever. But he know I'm married to him, but I can go on out here with Ricky and Tom and, and Jerry and all. No, 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 no. No. There is a conduct that goes with covenant. Come on and, here. And, and, and so here's the thing. These people, he said, yeah, yeah, you got that. You ain't listening to that doctrine and everything, but you still don't love me like you ought to love me. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Right yes. You know, um, Pastor Gail, that, that, that second chapter is off the chain. Um, the Lord yes. said so much. And one of the things that you said is that he, um, uh, uh, told them how wonderful they were before he began to rebuke them. And that's how God yes. is. He'll tell you what you're doing right. And that's how we are supposed to be as leaders in the church. You know, you can already re rebuke somebody that did something wrong, but you, you ain't never said nothing about all the things that they got right. And so, yeah, because you don't care nothing about that because you're not right. trying to give them a, rebu a rebuke to restore them. You're trying to re give them a, re a rebuke to hurt them or to maim them or to yes. cripple them. And so it gives us example right here on how you're supposed to do it. But you know what caught my attention is that he says um, in verse two, he said, I know your deeds, your hard work and your mm -hmm. perseverance. He says, but I know you cannot tolerate wicked people. This is the new living that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, okay. but are not and have found them to be yes. false. Yes. yes. Now, listen. Listen here. I am of the belief and scriptural base that the apostles did not die out with the last one. That it wasn't just the 12 that saw Jesus and walked with them and slept with them and ate with them and all of that. If that was the case, then um, um, Silas was called an apostle. Matthias became an apostle. And there's somebody else too in the in the. John that ain't coming to mind. I'm sorry, accent's not coming to mind. But the one that was born out of time, out of mm -hmm. season, is the mm -hmm. Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament that right. you and I quote, read, and 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 declare and speak to the devil, but but don't live. But okay, that's a horse of another, a different color. We're not gonna even go there right now. So Apostles were not just or are not just the, the 12 that walked with Jesus and he called. Um, that's that's number one. However, everybody that's naming been named an apostle, they're not one. An apostle is a Amen. sent one. That's that's number one. Amen. You sent to do something, not just you got a name and you just end up here and you ain't doing nothing, but you sent to do a work. Amen. Apostle teaches, they train, they instruct, but most importantly, they live. Yeah. And then Paul said, uh, he said this, and we don't see, but we don't want to talk about this, but we go, we go talk about it. <laughs> we go talk about it. I couldn't bring it right up. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, oh, he said so much in that, that, that 2 Corinthians 12, but I want to get Right here, verse 11, he says, you have made me act like a fool. Talk to the Corinthians because he got to compare and all that because they crazy. He said, you ought to be writing 
commendations from me for I am not at all inferior to these super apostles. So he is being mm -hmm. facetious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even though I am nothing at all. When I was with you, I certainly gave you proof that I am apostle. I need to see your proof. proof. See, we don't, we want to say that the prophetic, that the proof in the New Testament is not the same as it was in the Old Testament. You cannot be a wrong prophet. Prophets ain't wrong. Prophets ain't batting five out of 10, four out of 10, six out of 10. No. The Bible says, if what that prophet says come to pass, fear him. All right. Okay. It says, if it doesn't, that prophet still didn't call him false. Didn't call him false. Said that prophet has spoken presumptuously. And yes. you don't have to fear him or listen to him. Yes. If we are going to tell the whole truth and nothing but the only real false prophet, and I'm going to do a belabored teaching on this. Yes. That we find in the Old and the New Testament is Balaam. And Balaam was, he wasn't false in the beginning. That's why the people on, came now. to him. They came to him because they said what you say happens. So he wasn't false initially. But when the folks came with the money, but that wasn't enough. When they came with the money and the gold and the Gucci and the Lucci and the all red right, all and right. the Bentley and all of that, then that's when all of, all of who Balaam was switched sides. Come on, and man. how many times have we seen authentic voices switch on us when they get some money? Yes. And people wow. have said, I remember when they had holes in their shoes, they wasn't like that. Oh, yeah, they were. Yes. They just did not have the situation yes. and the circumstance to occur yes. for that to come to the surface. It was always there, baby. It was in there like yes. Prego, baby. It was in there. Yes. As soon as a, a circumstance arrived, as soon as their narrative changed, we saw that come up close and in person. So it was always there. So it was always, always in Balaam to be bought, to be bribed, to allow money, to allow things, things, to allow things, to allow fortune, to oh, allow platforms God. to change his direction. And, and, and now what I'm saying to God is what I'm saying to him, what I'm doing for God is what I was doing to him before money entered the picture. So don't you know that the devil has been watching you long enough to know what's going to lure you and tempt you? That's it. And we keep falling for the okie doke every time because we keep allowing things that only last for a minute. Mm -hmm. th listen, the deceitfulness of riches. The pleasures of sin, they That's only so last for a moment. What is thy life? It ain't nothing but a vapor that appears for a moment and then vanishes away. So we keep allowing temporary things to be essential in our lives because we think that people are only going to hear us if we drive in a Mercedes. No, wow. baby. Let me tell you something. I was on a bus and the people was listening to me. I was casting out devils and getting people saved on the RTA, baby, because the power and the anointing of God is what grabs people's attention. Paul said, right. I had proof of who I said I was. Y'all yes. keep yes. letting people roll up on y'all and change titles like they change their shoes, change titles like they change their underwear. And y'all let them roll up on y'all and tell y'all that they're not an apostle this, mm -hmm. not an apostle that. Y'all let people that have been in folks' churches for 20 years and they wasn't even a deacon. You let them come to your church and you done knighted them as an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, and all that. And they wasn't even a deacon at the 20 yeah. churches that they was before they got to yours. That's because you want bodies in the pew. See, y'all mad at that, but that's the truth. Oh, my fault. So if I give you a title and I give you a position, you're going to stay. If I make you feel like you're important and you're great, you're going to stay. Mm -hmm. And so in actuality, you are harming the people that God has mm -hmm. called you to, 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 to raise up and to develop with these folks that ain't been called to this.
Yes. You harming the people. You're not doing no good, and Harm you will people. give an account for God. Yeah, I said it. I said it. You can give me all my social medias if you want my phone number. I'll give you that too. You can call me. And I'm not talking about any one person in particular because it's vast all over the body of Christ. I am yes. talking in general to everybody that's doing it. And if you're taking it personal, then I am most definitely talking to you. Hello. Paul said, I brought proof of who I was. Yes. I gave proof positive that, I, that I'm a sent one. That I am sent to build people. That I am sent to build a foundation. That I am a part of the foundation and the building of the church. I, I, I brought proof. What was his proof? He said, for I patiently. I wasn't in a rush. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't in a hurry. I patiently did many signs and wonders yes. and miracles among you. Yes. Paul said the proof that you are an authentic apostle that signs, miracles, and wonders will be done among the people. Yes. Not just a sign, not just yes. a miracle, not just a wonder, but he said many. I brought, I brought the goods. I wasn't just talking. I proved who I was. Yes. So y'all all falling out over people that's talking. Y'all falling out over people that's prophesying to y'all. The guy gonna open the door and he gonna close another one. And so that's it for everybody. My six-year-old grandbabies can tell you that. Y'all falling out on the floor over that. But if you are an apostle of God, where are your signs, your miracles, and your work? Where your wow. proof? I want to see the proof. And that, that's all I'm asking for. I'm asking for the proof. If you are a, a prophet, I want to see the proof. I need to see something, some things, not one thing. Because anybody, you know, it, the, the, the clock is right twice a, a day. So anybody, <laughs> I, I'm talking about what you have said, thus said the Lord, whether it's in a, or you uh, in an open forum, where you talk to many people and declare the word of the Lord, or if you talk to one person in particular, where is the proof that you are a prophet? Wow. Okay. Wow. So that alone knock out 97% of the people that's on social media. 97% of the apostles on social media, they need to pull that down mm -hmm. and just be pastor. But because yeah. you think that is something, you think it's something. And then the warfare that you're getting behind that you can't handle it. It's about to kill you, but you're still trying to stand up like a crawling crutch. Don't, no, don't nobody know that you are just barely making it. You just barely get because you don't have the grace for it because you were never called to it. And so, but you're standing up there with a smile on your face, trying to present yourself as something that you're not. If the body of Christ would get in place in its proper place and, and where, where every joint supplies, if the eyes get in place and the ears get in place and the hands get in place, I'm talking about the thumb, the feet. We need everything in place. I'm talking about the internal organs, the heart. Here you are, heart. You're supposed to be pumping inside of me and you're trying to be the hands. God help. And so we got a, now, 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 now we got a freak on our hands. We got something that God didn't make. You, you, here you are, the feet that's supposed to be in the shoe to take me from place to place, but you're trying to be the eyes to tell me where to go. My feet cannot go until my eyes see it. And, and I'm telling my, my eyes see it, and I'm telling my feet, let's walk in this direction. But you're trying to tell me what to do, and you the feet. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Everybody ain't apostles. Everybody ain't prophets. No. Everybody ain't pastors. Everybody ain't teachers. Everybody are not is not evangelists. Stop that. Everybody is not. Yeah. And so what we have is a huge mess. And so what that does, Pastor Gail, is that it lessens the credibility of those oh, that are wow. genuine and true. Absolutely. So now you got to go beyond. And I, I either either you know it. Listen, I had, I had a woman that, that I had just met. And I'm just talking to her in general. She said, oh, it's something about you. 
she Baptist, honey, but she knew she knew it was a presence. She knew that it was a she didn't know what to call it. She said, God gonna use you, she don't know he already is. We talk, we're talking about sticks and stones may break our bones. I'm talking about we ain't talking about the Lord. As a matter of fact, I thought trying to say the woman jury. But because when you walk in it, when it's on your life, it is stacked on you. It's an indelible print on you. You ain't got to muster it up and conjure it up. And you ain't got to repeat what somebody else is saying. And you do not have a problem going against the grind. All the little ducks is going to the left. When God tells you to go to the right, I be saying to the Lord a whole lot of times, Pastor Gail, this is God's honest truth. I be like, God, why you don't give me nothing easy? Why you don't give me nothing smooth? Why you don't give me no pleasure? Why I can't? Why I can't go with what they saying? Why I, I mm -hmm. be trying? I be wanting to, <laughs> but I'm gonna rock with God because I know if God is for me and He is, yeah. there's nothing and nobody that can be against Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Baby, he'll make your enemies your footstool. Yeah. He'll make people that hate you open the door for you. He'll make people that hate you, hate to see you coming, put money in your pocket. He will make people that hate to hear your name, speak your name to people in power. Absolutely. But because we are so people orientated, we have taken the awesomeness from God you know, of him being great and magnificent. And we have bestowed it upon men, honey, please. Listen here, I honor, mm -hmm. everybody don't have no problem with honor the apostle, if you say you're apostle. I, I might call you one. I ain't gonna say I will. I'm gonna say I might. Cause I don't, see, but people get mad cause I don't care if you don't call me prophet. I don't mm -hmm. even introduce myself as prophet. Cause I could care less. Cause there are people that call me prophetess that hate me. To speak about, speak against me behind my back. And there are people that simply call me Roz that love the very ground that I stand on. So you can't measure that. You can't. Because them same people that was telling Jesus, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord that was pulling down branches. Palms of trees and lay at his feet. We don't even want your feet to hit the ground. We want you to walk on cushion. Matter of fact, we really want you to float in the air. Mm -hmm. Them same people mm -hmm. looked at that same Jesus and said, kill him. We, we better read our Bible. Mm -hmm. When you read your okay. Bible, I had people mad at me, you know, last week because I said, here, Rod, and, and Pharaoh, who, who God said, I raised you up uh, oh, to show man. my power when you kill babies. They was mad about that. But that, because you don't read your Bible. Just, right. just read it. it, it it's all right. in there. Right. And so Paul said, apostles are supposed to show proof that they are apostles. Yes. And, and, and listen at this. This is so off the chain because Jesus said that we would lay hands on the sick and the sick would cover. We would cast out devils in his name and we could take up, uh, we can drink any deadly thing would harm us. We would take up sir, all that. So Paul is walking in that by faith. But Paul is operating in signs, miracles, and wonders for two reasons. One is miracles is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's what it says, the gift of miracles. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Number two, the Bible declares the signs, miracles, and wonders follow his word. So if you start preaching his word without your mixture in it, if you stop That's copying and pasting, yes. then the signs, the miracles, and the wonders will follow what he has said. Yes. And then the Holy Spirit and his will will begin to use you in signs, miracles, and wonders. Just like you can't prophesy at will, you can't work a sign, a miracle, a wonder at will. And I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna be quiet and let you talk. I haven't looked at the whole video, but I will have it. I will been looked at it by next week and I want you to look at it too, because I've had several people send it to me and I just haven't had the time yet. Is um, Bishop Noel Jones. 
Oh, Pastor Gail. Yeah. And, and just what they said to me is that he was here, began to cry. And he was talking about how people have lost their faith in the prophetic because they are watching their loved ones die of this of COVID-19, watching their lo loved ones die of this disease. And that the, the prophets didn't give the warning. And that's because people that made prophets be something that they're not. And that's the new. Bible declared right. the secret thing belongs to the Lord. But the right. things that I reveal belong to us. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is the prophets and the apostles that's claiming to be all of this and the Benny Hens of the world that's blown on folk and supposed to be healing folks ain't got nobody healed of this coronavirus. Ain't got nobody healed of this COVID-19. That's one of the same. That they're closing down the church as opposed to opening the church. And the people that did have a prayer line in church, they all got corona and the pastor ended up dying. So where is the power? See, we don't want to have these conversations. Where, where is, I ain't just talking about y'all, I'm talking about me too. What, what a power. What, where is the power to heal? Where is the God of Elijah? Where are the signs, the miracles, and wonder? where are the greater works that he said that we would do? Because he went to his father. Where are they? They didn't get mixed up and pushed aside and pushed down for cash apps, for you go get a house and you go get a car and you go get a husband. And they got pushed down for these smooth words that don't heal, deliver, or set anybody free. That's what didn't happen to us. God is not short that he can't save us. It has happened because he got some things against us, church. He has some things against us. And because yes. judgment has come to the house of God and it comes to us first. For the listen, apostle, she was a prophet, but she became apostle. Told you they, they changed these titles like child, listen. Like I change cups, coffee cups. I used to drink out a different coffee cup every day because I love coffee cups. Yes. <laughs> Paula Price, who made the Prophets Dictionary, which I got and I've looked at a couple times and everything. Y'all, I'm just going to keep it 100. I love my Bible. I love Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And I love uh, the, the, the Concordance. And I love a Bible Dictionary. And I love... That is what I look to find the Greek word and the Hebrew. And I know sometimes mm -hmm. it can mean the same thing, but it does not apply as the same to this particular scripture. That's why we got to rightly divide. Okay. She prophesied that Trump was going to be the president and won't take it back. Told the people that Trump is going to be the president. Y'all just wait and see. And that Trump won the election. Now, this is what she just, just said. That Trump won the election. But Biden stole it. And this is what I posted. Because you you go, I done posted this so many times, I just need to copy and paste. But see, you're not gonna this <laughs> and that is this. But see, that's these false apostles. Y'all heard me. Yes. Uh, 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 the scripture said, he said, I know, I know you don't, you, you, you know these false apostles, and you don't like that. You have tried them and found out that they mm -hmm. were false. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, she mm -hmm. said, again. she said that Trump won and that Biden stole the election. Okay. And I said this. So what you're saying is that the God you serve, he wanted Trump, and this is what I done told all of them, this is right here. He wanted Trump to win, but he didn't have the power to make it happen. I don't serve that one. That ain't doing, me and you, we are not the same. <laughs> we are right. not talking about the same God. Right, right. Because if God wanted Trump to win, if God wanted me to win, if God wanted you to win, or anybody else to win, to it's lose, or to draw, it's, it's going to happen. happen. So now you're giving man 
more authority and power than the God you serve. So why are you serving him? Why are you, why are you serving somebody that can't get his will done? We are not the same. I serve the God that can look at darkness and say, let there be light. Uh, thank you, Lord. I serve the God that can take 600,000 people and tell a whole sea, tell the waters of the sea to stand up on both sides. Come on. The Bible declares that the waters became a wall to them. Yes. See, we don't, we don't, we don't understand and grasp uh, not even a drop of who he is. Because if God didn't make water stand up on both sides, he didn't, he didn't get rid of the whales and the shark and the fish and the, all the people and animals in the ocean. Don't you know that the that the animals in the ocean was trying to get at them? Because they still, but he did a barricade that they could not pass. Mm -hmm. The same God, when he divided the ocean, told the oceans, this is how far you can go. Yes. And you cannot go in these earth. Yes. So much so that the Bible declares that the waves <laughs> clap their hands to give him praise. Y'all don't serve the same one I do. You, you serve a limitless God that can't mm -hmm. cause a man to get elected. We are not the same. See, My that's God. what I'm talking about, them false My apostles God. and false prophets that folk keep holding up. My God. Oh, help me today. Pastor Gail, we ain't got no five minutes. I'm going to let you end us. I, I know I, I did. I'm with you. <laughs> Jesus, help But me. what you have said, you know, what makes a false prophet? What makes people who have once um, been devoted to God and was devoted to his will? I think the key is in what uh, John said in the finality of his addressing at a church at Ephesus. Here was this church seated in the midst of idolatry, in the midst of all of this pagan worship, in the midst of all of this fornication and all of this. But listen, he gave them a formula rise. Here's the formula. I say this all the time. I pray all the time that the people that have gotten off, God will pull them in and repurpose them and, and reprogram them and send them back out if possible. I was just looking at a, uh, the a movie about Carlton Pearson again the other day. And again, my heart cries out, God caused my brother to repent and come back to himself. Here is the formula. Change your inner self, the Amplified says. Yes. You got to be changed on the inside. You let that fly get in the ointment, that fly of prosperity, the fly of carnality. What makes the people can get up and proclaim God and set a church on fire? They can set a church on fire. I can study 12 days and 17 hours and still can't get the kind of response some of these people can get. And they can get the response to turn around and go sleep with anybody, everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Steal mm -hmm. the money, do all of that. Change your inner self. Yeah. Change your own way of thinking, he said. Change your old way of thinking. That's the only, you got to go back like the pig to the vomit. They say the pig to the mud and the yes. dog to the vomit in order to not maintain a standard of holiness toward God. The, okay. In order to not maintain the love, you got to go beyond realizing what he gave up for you. Mm. He so loved us. He yes. gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, he wasn't exclusive in it, believed on him. You know, I mean, should not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, and finally give up your sinful behavior and seek God's will. That's the only thing that's going to change what's happening in the church right now. Is yes. that we've got to repent. Repent mm -hmm. is like I would say about sorry. Sorry does not have a period. Sorry has a comma. Yeah. There must be an action following a sorry yes and so it's time for us not to be sorry in our conduct in our ways in our actions it's time for us to be sorry comma and change that's excellent. that's excellent praise god well we thank you guys so very very much for tuning in to today's edition of god and everything i put the cash app and the paypal link i'm asking that everybody that's on the live today to sell ten dollars to help keep this broadcast on the air. Also, we will be posting 
uh, the flyer for the Prophetic Insight School. Go ahead and register. Registration is only $100 for eight weeks, which will include your book, Prophetic Insight, Volume 1. God bless you. We love you. Until next week, pray for us as we pray for you. Peace.